Should you upgrade to the brand new OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro? Well, that is what I am going to try and answer today. So yes, OnePlus has taken the wraps off its brand new flagships for 2020. They are packed with some amazing bits of tech, but are they really worth spending your money on if you've got one of the earlier generation OnePlus phones or indeed any other phone and you're just maybe tempted by this shiny new light blue design? Well, on paper, these phones do pack quite a punch. They've got the latest Qualcomm processors, various camera upgrades, and of course, they come packing 5G. That's pretty much in line with everything we would expect from a flagship phone launching in 2020. So let's start with the look of these things. And physically, there hasn't really been any real change in the past couple of generations. Here we've got the uh, the 8 standard OnePlus 8, and here's the 7T Pro from last year. And apart from the actual shade of blue they're using, these phones are basically identical. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They're decent looking phones, but if you are wanting to upgrade and get a brand new, fresh design, then this probably isn't going to excite you all that much. Size-wise, the 8 Pro has swollen a little bit to incorporate the 6.78 inch display. So that size does beat the uh, 6. Point, I think 6.7 inches of the 70 Pro last year, but it's not quite pushing things to the 6.9 inches of Samsung's Galaxy S20 Ultra. The standard OnePlus 8 Pro comes in at 6.55 inches, so it is a little bit smaller than the Pro version. Now, I've been using both for about a week now, and even the biggest size, I don't find too difficult to use one-handed, and I don't exactly have these massive shovel hands. They're reasonably small, and these things are comfortable enough to use. Speaking of the screens though, the OnePlus 8 has a 90 hertz refresh rate, which makes scrolling around the interface look buttery smooth. The 8 Pro does up that to 120 hertz, and while some of you more dedicated gamers might notice that difference in the screen refresh rate, to be honest, when we've used these both for just everyday tasks side by side, it's very difficult to tell any kind of difference. You're still getting a very, very smooth experience on either phone. Phone. The older generation 7T and 7T Pro also had 90Hz display, so there's no real reason to upgrade here. And screen resolution hasn't really changed here either. The 8 Pro has 513 pixels per inch, which is about the same as the 516 pixels per inch of last year's 7T Pro. That is not a difference that you will ever be able to notice, no matter how close you hold your phone to your face. Okay, so let's talk cameras. The standard OnePlus 8 has got three rear cameras. It's got its standard zoom, it's got a wide angle mode, and it's also got a two megapixel macro mode, which allows for slightly closer focusing on those small objects. Now in our testing, we haven't really loved the macro mode because you can get really good results from the standard camera just by zooming in on screen. Yes, it reduces the quality slightly, but actually we found that the colors and the exposure is a little bit better. The wide and the super wide angle cameras take great shots though, as does, of course, the cameras on the 8 Pro, which also has a three times telephoto mode camera. So that's the main upgrade in the cameras between the 8 and the 8 Pro. Camera quality overall is very good, but if photography is absolutely critical for you, then you might wanna consider going for Samsung's Galaxy S20 Ultra, which has a much bigger lossless zoom mode as well as 8K video. Although of course, those are features that you are paying for as that phone does come at a much higher cost. Both OnePlus models do have a nightscape mode for brighter shots when the light really drops, but I found that in my testing the iPhone 11 Pro's night mode can take superior shots in the dark, although again th that phone is more expensive so that's a trade-off you're going to have to think about. All the recent OnePlus models can shoot 4K video and they've all got 16 megapixel front-facing selfie cameras so there's no reason to upgrade there. The 8 series packs Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 865 processor. Now the 7T last year had the 855 Plus processor, which was already an absolute powerhouse. So I really don't think you're gonna notice much of a processor upgrade in these new models. 
games, of course, play very smoothly. Navigating around a phone is free of any kind of lag, and these things really won't bat an eye at photo editing or video streaming. If you've got a top phone from last year, whether it's a 7T Pro or maybe a Samsung Galaxy S10, then really this processor power is not going to be a good reason to upgrade. If you've got a much older phone, like a Galaxy S6 or a much older OnePlus phone, you will notice that power, certainly if you plan on playing a lot of very demanding games. Both the 8 and the 8 Pro come with 5G connectivity because, of course, it's 2020 and no phone maker is going to launch a flagship phone in 2020 without 5G. That would just be dumb. Are you listening, Apple? Dumb. 5G could be a real reason to upgrade here, particularly if you're using an older phone which doesn't have 5G and you really want to experience those blazing fast speeds. Obviously though, that's only worth it if you're in a 5G supported area and you're already on a phone plan which supports 5G. If you live in a small town which maybe isn't going to get 5G for some time, it's really not worth spending that money on the phone now because it could be a long time before you actually see that benefit. Instead, I'd recommend waiting till the end of the year, see what the phone company's plans are for bringing 5G to where you are and then looking at upgrading your phone. A lot of the other features remain the same on these phones. There's in-screen fingerprint scanning, fast charging over USB-C, although the new OnePlus 8 Pro does support wireless charging, which could appeal. The batteries on both of them should hold out for about a full day of general use, as should any top-end phone right now, and there's still no support for micro SD cards to expand the built-in storage. All of which brings me to my final conclusion about whether you should actually upgrade. Well, the answer is fairly straightforward. If you've got a good top-end phone from last year, like a 7T Pro or a, one of the Galaxy phones, then no, you are not going to benefit enough from the upgrade to the processor or to the camera here to really notice a difference and to justify that money. The only caveat being is if you are really that desperate to get 5G and if 5G is already very common in your area. However, if you are using a much older device and you are really tempted by some of the new features like the smoother display, the camera upgrades and whatnot, then these are very good phones to consider. Now, while OnePlus isn't hitting its affordable price point that it became known for in its early days, they are still undercutting some of the other phones, particularly the S20 Ultra or the iPhone 11 Pro. So they're definitely not qualifying as affordable, but they are more affordable than others, if that makes sense. But between the 8 and the 8 Pro, my money would probably go on the standard 8. You still get features like the smooth screen, you get some of the important camera updates, and of course you get that 5G, but it comes at a price which is undercutting the 8 Pro, making it a little easier on the wallet. But let me know what you think of these two phones by hitting the comment box below and make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more from CNET.